分に気づいてあ、はい、ちょっと。
Do you recall what uh, the defendant was wearing at that time? At that time, no, I do not. It's been, it's been a few years. That's fine. Do you recall um, whether Mr. Minow had any facial hair at that time? At that time, I do not remember. Do you recall giving a statement to the uh, New Jersey State Police in regards to, your, of, in regards to the investigation of the, uh, the death of the terror? Yes, I do. It would reviewing the transcript of that statement help refresh your memory as to what clothing Mr. Monell had that day and what his facial hair was like that day. Is it yes? Yes. It's um, 44. That's 44, Judge. 44, sorry. Mm -hmm. okay. James, I'm going to ask you to look at page 21 of this document, S44. And just read page 21. Sir, we just have to read it. Read it to yourself to not read it out loud, okay? okay. 21 up to the top of page 22. Okay, just go ahead and read that to yourself, okay? okay. Yes. Can you describe what he was wearing? He was wearing a black hoodie. I uh, don't know. I do not recall it was a bumper pullover. Uh, he had jeans on. I don't recall the color. Uh, and I don't recall if he was wearing boots or sneaks at that time. Uh, do you recall his uh, facial hair at that time? Yes. Can you, can you describe that? It was long at that time. It was longer than mine. I hadn't shaved for about three days, but it was longer than mine. Let me show you a. Photograph Smith Marcus S one thirty seven. Okay. S one thirty seven. Yes. Let me ask you to look at S one thirty seven. Do you recognize the person that's depicted in S one thirty seven? Yes. Who is that? That is Jeremiah Mino. Okay, do you remember if his facial hair was longer or it longer? Was lo it was longer. How much longer? Uh about longer maybe a little bit longer than what I got. Right now? Yes. At some point, do you recall Tara and the defendant leaving your house? I do not recall them leaving. They were still at my house when I left to go take care of some business. Okay. Um, where was Jeremiah's truck when you left? When I, when I left, it was still behind my house. Okay. And uh, do you recall uh, arriving home later? Yes. It was Jeremiah's truck there when you came back home? No. Do you recall what time you got home? It was late. It was well, it was after one o'clock, I believe. One o'clock in the morning. Yes. Did you go to bed after coming home? Yes. Uh, what happened when you woke up the next morning on the nineteenth? Uh, I was I was sleeping, and my wife got up to get my daughter ready for school, and she was waiting for Tara to bring the kids down to, to catch the bus outside my house that that morning, and my wife came in and woke me up. Um, without saying what she said when she came to look at the bus, um, what was your reaction? I jumped up. Literally, I was dead sleep. My wife told me what it, uh, what was going on. And what did you do after hearing what the bus said? I had made a phone call to a friend of mine, and we went down to Tara's house. And were you able to get inside of Tara's house? Yes. What uh, door did you go through? We went in the back door. Um, if you're looking at the house, which side was that? The the front door is to the, to my right. The back door is to my left, and that's the door we went in. Was the door to the left? What did you uh, see when you got inside? Uh, I saw nothing out of the ordinary at first. Um, where did you see something out of the ordinary? Uh, when we got to the living room. Okay. What did you see in the living room? There was a blanket on the floor. Okay. And 
Did you do anything after seeing the blanket? Um, I didn't react at first until um, a fr my friend had um, raised the blanket up and all I saw was her face. Uh, when you say your friend, who is your friend? Glenn Atchison. Well, can you describe what you saw when the blanket was lifted up? Uh, I only saw her face covered in blood. Okay, whose face did you see? Tara O'Shea's. What did you do after seeing Tara's face covered in blood? I was already on the phone with 911 when I entered the house. Um, when I saw uh, Tara's face, I immediately backed out of the house and went outside and was still on the phone with 911. Nothing further at this time, but thank you. Cross examination. <clears throat> Mr. Greer, um, you said on the evening before um, you went to Tara's house, Tara, Jeremiah, and the two kids were at your house? Yes. Do you remember what time of day that was? It was, it, it, I got home roughly around four in the afternoon, something like somewhere around there, and everybody was at my house. And they were at your house already? Yes. Um, and then you say when you left your house, they were still there, correct? Correct. And do you know around what time it was that you left the house? It was after 11. So, so, you, so after 11 p.m.? Correct. And they were still at your house? Right. And then you said, and at that time, you said Mr. Monell's truck was still parked behind your house? Yes. And, but when you got home, it was gone? Correct. Um, what time did you get home? I got home after 1 o'clock. After 1 o'clock? Roughly. And, and by then, you said that the truck was gone? Correct. Okay, hey, and then just one day, correct? Yes. Any other questions? Yeah. Mr. Greer, do you recall getting a, um, a phone call? Yes. Do you remember what time that was? It was after 9 o'clock at night. So, were you home when you got that phone call? Yes, I was. Okay. Was Tara and Jeremiah at your house when you got that phone call? Thinking back now, no, I was not. I was still at the house, yes. Okay. You, you were at the I was at the house. I was the one that took the call. Do you remember where Tara and Jeremiah were? They were at their house, but his truck was still at my house. Okay. All right. So... Times might be a little, little off from what you said. Yes. Okay. Now, thinking back, yes. Because I do remember the phone call and it came in at night before I left. Okay. All right, Jason. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. You're excused. Away from me. When you say she, who do you mean? My friend Tara. How long uh, did you know Tara? Since we were like five in brownies. 
Um, where did you grow up? Laurel Lake. Did she also grow up in Laurel Lake? Yeah. Um, how close to friends were you while you were growing up? Very close. We were sisters. Um, how frequently would you see each other? Every day. Did you go to school together? Mm -hmm. um, was there a time uh, when you lost contact with her? Yes. About when was that? Um, not long after my mom passed away in 2002. Do you know if Tara was in a relationship at the time? Yes. And who was that with? Jeremiah Monell. Did you see Mr. Monell in the courtroom today? Yes. Okay. I see you pointing out some jewelry and describe what he's wearing. It's right there, he's wearing a suit. Right, there are a fact of witness that kind of black man in the Did there come a time when you were able to reconnect with Tara? Yes. Hey, when did that happen? Um, about 2014 when she moved to Raymond Drive. Do you know where she lived before coming to Raymond Drive? Um, I had, she had told me to see her though with her husband and her kids. When she moved to 7901 Raymond Drive, was she still in a relationship with uh, Jeremiah? Um, I know they were separated, but working things out or trying to. Do you know if Tara had any children? Uh, she had two by him. And do you remember how old they were back in um, December of 2016? Sarah was five, Jeremiah was 12. And how close were you to, uh, to Sarah and Jeremiah? Pretty close. Okay. Um, what, what made you say you were pretty close? Um, they called me Aunt Crystal. How often did you see them? Every day. Why would you have the occasion to see them every day? Um, well, for one, their bus stop was right next to my house on Raymond Drive, and um, Tara was my best friend, so I was either at her house or she was at my house every day. Um, what happened um, on mornings uh, before the bus came to pick up the kids? Tara would come over, the kids would come in with her, and she would drink her coffee while I drink water, because I'm not a coffee drinker. Um, how is it that she would come into your house? Would she have to you know, knock on the door? Say, she had a key. Okay. Um, and how often would, would that happen? Every day. Before December 2016, um, do you recall seeing uh, the defendant around that time in December? Not much, no. When was the last time you saw the defendant prior to December 2016? Um, around April or May, same year. He was there. Do you recall um, seeing him in November at some time? Yes. And what um, what occurred so that you saw him in November? Um, he was at her home fixing the heater. Where were you at when that was happening? I was with him at her house. And, and where was Tara? Tara was at my house with my daughter and her children. <clears throat> I want to bring your attention specifically to um, Sunday, uh, December 18th of 2016. Uh, did you see Tara that day? Yes. Uh, when did you see her? It was around 3, 3.30. She came up to my, well, down to my house um, just to come talk. It was her and Sarah. Sarah went to play with my daughter, Bella. And how did Tara get to your house? She drove her uh, Ford Explorer. And do you recall what condition that Ford Explorer was in? Um, when she walked in, she said she had no brakes on her car. She couldn't stop. Objection. Here's a second. I'm not offering no. the truth. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, General, what, um, what did you guys talk about generally that, that day? Um, without saying what she said, but just as general. Just a lot of stuff, mainly kids. You know, our kids it was mainly the conversation. Do you recall seeing the defendant at some time that day? Yes. Do you recall approximately what time you saw him? Um, it was a little after she came, so around 3, 3.30. Mm -hmm. Not long after she showed up. Where did he show up? At my home. Okay. Do you remember what kind of car he drove at the time? Uh, he had a Chevy S10. Okay. Do you remember... Anything a little more detail about that truck? Um, it's two different colors. It was blue and gray. It was kind of low, but not a low rider. Let me show you um, S141, which is already in evidence. You recognize what's depicted there in S141? Yes. Okay, and what is in S141? Uh, the S10 Jeremiah's truck. And so the truck you saw him drive? That yes. Day? Where did you park that truck? 
um, behind my house. What happened after after he came to the house? Um, I was on the phone with my husband, but um, he had looked at her brakes on her car, and then he took her car to her house to fix the brakes because I guess the brake line had blue. When you say he, when you Jeremiah. And what were you talking to your husband about at the time? Uh, the brake line, because I was on the phone with him, and I had told him that her brakes weren't working, and he figured it was a brake line that blew also. Where was your husband at at that time? He was on, on his way home from over the road truck driver. <clears throat> now, do you recall seeing uh, the defendant working on Paris' car that day? Yes. And where was he working on the car at? At her home in her driveway. Um, did you stay home the entire day? No. Uh, do you recall whether Tara and her daughter left your house? Yes. Do you remember about when that was? Um, I'm not for sure when the time they left, but they did take my daughter with them. And where did you go? I went Christmas shopping. Was your husband home at that time? Yes. Do you remember about the time that was? Um, maybe around 5, 5.30. Can't be exact. At some point later that evening, did you um, speak with her? Yes. Okay. How, how did you speak with her? Um, I called her a couple of times, checked to make sure my daughter was okay. Um, then I called her when I was on my way home, again, to see if Bella was okay and if Tara had needed something. Tara said she needed a pack of cigarettes, and I told her I would pick them up. Do you remember about what time that was? Um, a little before 7, or around 7, around in there. Do you remember that was time you picked up your dog? Yes, that was exactly 7.55. Uh, when you got to uh, Harris' house, mm -hmm. at that time when you picked uh, your daughter up, uh, was, did you see Mr. Manelli? Yes. Okay, where was he at? He was in the driveway, still fixing the red line. What did you do after picking up your dog? Um, I went home. I mean, I saw for a couple minutes with Tara, and then I, I went home and got Bella ready for bed. About what time did you go to sleep that night? Um, maybe around 9, 10, around in there. When you got back to your house, um, where was the defendant stuck? I'm behind my house. Do you recall hearing anything later that night that caught your attention? It was around, like... 11, 11.30, I thought I heard his truck fire up, and he got sound like he left, but I wasn't awake awake. Um, what time did you get up the next morning? Around 8. It's normally when my alarm would go off when my alarm woke me up. So your alarm would woke you up that way? Yes. Um, what else happened uh, after you woke up? Um, I wasn't quite out of bed yet, but there was pounding on my door, and I didn't know who it was because Tara had a key to my house, so she would just walk in. Normally, what time would Tara uh, get to your house in the morning? Normally around a little, about 8.15, 8.30 around in there. Okay, about what time did you hear that pounding? Um, a little before 8.15. It was pretty early yet. So, once you heard that pounding, what did you do? I answered the door. And who was at the door? Uh, little Maya and, I'm oh, sorry. Jeremiah Jr. and Sarah. When you say little Maya, who are you talking about? Um, Tyra's son, Jeremiah. Is that how you normally refer to him? Yeah, we all called him either Maya or little Maya. And how was uh, Jeremiah dressed, the son? Um, he was in jeans and a shirt. Sarah was in jammies. Do you remember what kind of pajamas? No. <laughs> I know they were funny pajamas. And did you see Tara? No. What were you thinking um, when you saw Jeremiah and Sarah standing there? It was unusual, because Tara was always with them. Um, so I asked Jeremiah, where's Mommy? And she... Objection. Oh, okay. So. so Jeremiah said something to you? Yes. What was your reaction to that? What? I was in shock. And what did you do after hearing his response? Um, I went to my room got dressed, put a pair of slippers on, and I went to Tyra's house. Uh, did anybody go with you? Uh, my husband was a couple feet behind me. And 
Where did you go once you got down to Paris House? Um, I went into the house. Um, I want to go back to when you saw Jeremiah and Sarah outside a little bit. Um, what, what was, can you describe the look that was on Jeremiah's face at that time? Objection leading. Go ahead and answer the question. Oh. Um, it, it looked like shock, devastation, like something was really wrong. Based on his response, did, what did you actually believe at that time? I didn't think it was true. When you got down to the house, Paris house, what, what happened when, once you got down there? Um, I went in through the back door. When you mean the back door, um, if you're looking at the house, on which side was the door? That door? On the left. And what happened once you got inside? I went in, um, as soon as you walk into her home, through the back door is her bedroom, and then there's the hallway. So I walked up the hallway, closed the bathroom door because it was open and it would block the hallway. And then I closed that and went through the curtain that was hanging and into the kitchen and then into the living room. And what did you see once you got into the living room? Um, frozen blanket on the floor with a body underneath. Did you recognize the blanket? Yes. What did you recognize that blanket from? Um, it was Sarah's favorite blanket, and Tara used to curl up on the couch with it. And what was your reaction to seeing that blanket on the floor? Shock. I, I didn't believe it. I didn't touch anything, so I just went and opened the front door. Did you have to do anything to the front door to get out? I had to unlock it and open it, yes. Who else was inside the house at that time? By then, my husband was in the house. Was anybody else there at that time? Not at that time, no. And did you see what was under the blanket? No. Uh, what happened after you got outside? I went outside to get some air because I knew, I knew she was going. There was no movement. Um, and I just stayed outside when my husband was in the house on the phone when I went on. Nothing further at this time. Cross examination. <clears throat> Mr. Do you remember back in uh, December of 2016 doing a statement with the state troopers? Yes. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that. I'm going to ask some questions about that and I'm going to ask some uh, other questions. Um, okay. So you can tell them. You've known uh, Sarah since, or Tara since age five, mm -hmm. um, that you were good friends, right? Yes. Uh, that you knew young Jeremiah, that's correct? Yes. He enjoyed playing Call of Duty mm -hmm. on PlayStation 4. Yes. Okay, and um, there was also a daughter, Sarah. She was, I believe, how old was she? She was five. She was age five. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> And you told uh, Detective Booth that Jeremiah and Tara had been together for 14 years, married for 10? Yes. Um, it's your understanding that the majority of those years were spent together uh, as a family in Cedarville? Yes. And then in 2014, you became reacquainted or renewed your friendship with uh, Tara when yes. the family moved into um, your neighborhood, correct? Yes. And it's your understanding that uh, Jeremiah uh, bought that house, is that correct? Yes. And you understand that it was your understanding that um, Tara had a daughter uh, named Tara Cheeseman who would have been about 17 back then? Yes. A son, uh, James Cheeseman Jr., would have been about 15 at that time? Yes. Uh, she also had an older daughter named Terry. Terry Lee, yes. Terry raised by her mom, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, And again, you told the detectives that uh, you were uh, uh, a lot more uh, friendly or knew more of Tara than you did of Jeremiah. Is that yes. Correct? So, um, you and Tara were talking a lot, correct? Yes. And, um, you told the detectives uh, that um, around that time uh, Tara had been in a relationship with Dustin Orange, is that correct? Yes.
And then again, um, your testimony uh, was that um, on December 18th, uh, Tara left your house with um, young Sarah and your daughter Bella, correct? Yes. Went to her house, mm -hmm. you went Christmas shopping, mm -hmm. and, you picked up, and then you picked up the daughter at 755, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um. <coughs> no further questions? Redirect. Thank you. Um, this is Greer. At your knowledge, I was Jeremiah living the defendant. Was he living with Tara when she moved into 7901 Marion Drive? I don't think so, but I can't be for sure. And what about between April of 2016 and December of 2016? Was the defendant living at that house? No. The person that uh, Mr. Perry mentioned, Dustin Orange, um, how long of a relationship was that? Maybe a month. It wasn't really a relationship, it was kind of more of a flame. General duties include uh, responding to any calls for service, uh, motor vehicle crashes, just regular general duties. And um, around that time frame, from December 2016 to January 2017, were you aware of a suspect that was wanted in connection with a murder that occurred in Laurel Lake? Yes, sir. And um, who was the suspect that was wanted? That was uh, Jeremiah Winnell. I'm going to bring your attention back to January 2nd, 2017. Were you on duty that day? Yes, sir. Do you recall what the weather was? It was a clear day. And did you receive a um, call at the barracks that day um, with information regarding that murder investigation? Yes, sir. Based off of that information, um, what did you then do? Based off that information, I then went to the area that we were called to, saying that supposedly that the suspect was in the area. Uh, they just conducted a search of the area. What area was that? That was a wooded area off of 322 and 54, approximately three quarters of a mile into the woods off of State Highway 54. And uh, that area, you know, 322, um, over there, um, is that any like, kind of industry or anything like that in that area? Uh, there's a cement uh, factory there. Um, there's a small little uh, shopping plaza, with a pizzeria, a couple other stores in there. But other than that, that area is not very heavily active. Are there um, railroad tracks that run near the uh, that, uh, concrete plant? Yes. Okay. And um, after receiving that information, where was the area that you specifically went to? I went to the area by the railroad tracks. I actually went under uh, State Highway 54 
and walked along basically parallel to 322 uh, down a trail. There was a, there was a trail approximately wide enough to fit a car, uh, and I just started walking down that trail. Were there any other troopers that were with you at that time? Uh, those other troopers were at the pizzeria trying to inquire any uh, questions. Um, what were you looking for while you were walking down that trail? Uh, just anybody out in the woods, uh, specifically, uh, we were told the individual was wearing blue jeans and a black sweatshirt with a hoodie. Um, that was supposed to be the suspect. You described like a, a wooded area. How heavily wooded is that area? Uh, it was heavily wooded due to the fact it was wintertime. A lot of leaves had fallen, so you, your, your visibility was pretty clear through the woods. Can you describe how far down you went on that trail? Uh, approximately three quarters of a mile down the trail. Um, the trail split into a Y. I then, to the north, went to a Y. I started walking to the north of that. And it was a little hill, went down, up that hill, down it, and it ended real quick to a river. So I decided to turn around, went back up. And when I came back up on top of the hill is when I uh, observed the individual in blue jeans and a black, black sweatshirt hoodie. And what did you do once you observed that individual? I ordered the individual to stop and to get on the ground. And what was the individual's um, response? They just stopped, uh, didn't turn to look at me, and just got on the ground. And what did you do um, after you gave that this command? I then got over to the individual and uh, I stood them up and said, you know, what's your name? Uh, which to them they answered nothing at all. Do you see that subject in the courtroom today? Yes. Can you please uh, point out to the jury and describe what he's wearing? Right, a white shirt with a tie and a black jacket. Let the record reflect the witness identified the defendant in the court. Hey, um, could you, um, again, uh, describe the clothing that you actually observed him wearing at that time? Uh, I was wearing blue jeans, um, black hoodie sweatshirt, the hood was up. Uh, he was walking uh, nonchalantly and just eating pizza. So it all kind of jived with what the pizza would even say. Objection. Sustained. So he asked the individual for his name, and uh, what was the response you got? Uh, nothing. He refused to answer. Did you search uh, uh, Mr. Monell at that time? Not in the woods, uh, due to the fact there was no other rails around me. Where did you, uh, what did you then do after locating Mr. Monell? Uh, once I located him, I handcuffed him uh, due to the fact he wouldn't give me his name. And he matched the description. I then walked back to my troop car with him uh, to get see if he can get me any further details. He wouldn't even talk to me at all. And uh, what happened when you got back to your uh, patrol car? She went to the troop car, uh, and then uh, Mirandized him, searched him, no ID on him at all. Uh, he just had a bottle of medication and some change. Do you recall whether he had any cigarettes at the time? Uh, no. Uh, what was done after uh, you uh, put him in the troop car? After I got in the troop car, I then brought him to the BMS station, which is approximately nine and a half a mile from where we were, uh, and then turned him over to the future unit, who was already at the station. Okay. About how far, um, the location where you found this unit, how far was that from that, that concrete plant? Uh, Through the woods. Mile maybe. It's hard to say. This yeah. one. I have nothing to do Cross examination. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good afternoon, Chief. Good afternoon, ma'am. What township was it that um, you located Mr. Monell in? It's considered Folsom Borough. Folsom Borough? Yeah. And where is that located? That's right next to Pina Vista. Right, it's, it's, it's all merged right there. It's all, so, and is that, what, and what county is it in? It's only county. county. Um, and you said it wasn't far from the Port Norris barracks? The Buda Vista Station. Buda Vista Station. Yes. How, how far was that? How far from the Buda Vista mm -hmm. Station? Like, it's probably half a mile. A half a mile? Yeah, half a mile. Okay. Three quarters of a mile, maybe. And, um, how far is that from Kermit County? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, by vehicle. I'm going to estimate maybe 15 
miles, maybe, 20 miles, maybe. Okay, no further questions. How far, thank you, How far was the concrete plant from the university station? Uh, about half a mile, like that. Thank you. Dr. Fred? Yeah. Your excuse. Thank you. Next witness. Judge, um, I'm not going to have anybody until uh, after lunch. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I've already said sometimes we break early, sometimes we break really early. Um, unfortunately, uh, more fortunately, sometimes things move along more quickly than we anticipated. So at this point, we're going to take our lunch break. Um, hold on one second. Can I see counsel type up, please?